Hey Rust developers, Mark Mahuda here, and this is the third video of the series Developing Web Interfaces for Rust. As usual, I'm going to work with Rust DS, so let me open the project. As you can see, I'm working on the Rust web development video number three. You can copy the project just using the share link on the description of the video just below. Okay, so basically, the goal of this video is to create this web page joystick to control a robot that we're gonna have in a simulation, okay? So in order to do that, let's start configuring the environment as we have done in the previous videos. So just open a web shell, I'm not gonna use the notebook anymore. And remember the first step, you have to source the virtual environment of Python that we are using. Go to the web pages folder and start the Python web server. It goes like this, Python minus M http.server and you must check what is your public IP because every time you open Rust DS we are assigning to you a different remote computer so you won't have the same public IP that you had in the, in the previous time that you opened Rust DS okay at this moment you must have the web page available uh, the port number 8000 there it is and this is the code that we are going to have, uh, you are going to have at the end of the video. So basically I have created already all the elements that we need to have in the page in order to create the joystick. And I'm going to explain about it uh, line by line. So let's check what we have in the IDE. So basically uh, we still have those two files. The first one is the, ind is the index.html file. And the content remains almost the same. The biggest difference here is that after the first row where we have defined the state of the connection and the log messages, uh, we have a new row here uh, creating the elements to control the robot, okay? So we have another row and just inside of it, we have a subtitle comments and a first row to send the robot forward then the second row where we are defining the buttons to turn left to stop and to stop and turn right and finally a third row to send the robot backwards okay uh, in the second web show i'm gonna launch the rust server so it goes like this rust launch rust server underscore server rust bridge underscore websocket dot launch okay try to connect it again. As you can see, the first time I tried, it didn't work. That's because Rust grid server was not running, but now it must work. So let's try to connect to it. And there it is. We have a new message in the logs uh, connected. So we are connected. And we have the buttons, now they are enabled. So why are they enabled now that we are connected? Uh, if you disconnect, if you just press the disconnect button here, you cannot click the buttons anymore because they are disabled. And if you connect, they are enabled. So how does it work? Uh, remember that we have put some instructions in the previous video. In order to show the messages, we were using this instruction here. V, if, and V else you can use, or just V if again using the other condition. And I've put the same conditions, but instead of showing or not the buttons, here I am, I am just disabling the buttons. So I put two conditions here. If the connection to Rust Bridge is loading or if it's not connected, the button must be disabled, okay? So this is the first important rule that you uh, must check in the HTML page. And the second, the second uh, implementation that we put here is the click event handler. So at click, I am assigning this event to a method and it's called it forward. This is very important that this click event handler must match exactly the same name of the method that we have defined in the JavaScript file. So as you can see, we have this forward method being defined here, okay? And the same for the rest of the buttons. They have a very close implementation to each other. So we have always the disable rule here, and just at the beginning we have the click event handler, okay? We have also some classes from Bootstrap just to give to the buttons some styles, 
as you can see we have a pretty nice button here instead of a very simple button from HTML and this is how you apply this kind of style to the button of the page okay uh, now let's check the methods that we are calling actually I have created some new methods here I created one for each uh, command that I want to send to the robot so forward stop backward turn left and turn right and all of them are calling uh, this method here which is set topic okay so we have six new methods and except this one set topic all of the methods they have a very uh, close structure to each other which is basically defining a message they want to send to the robot to ross environment we are setting the topic that we want to publish this message to and finally we are publishing the message to the topic so uh, let's try for example i'm gonna start a simulation as usual i'm gonna use the turtle bot 2 it's a very simple robot so just select the empty world and select turtle bot 2 robot start a simulation and it may take a few seconds until it gets ready okay there it is Reload the page. The world's ready. Let's wait a few more seconds until the robot is made available. I'm going to minimize the logs. And we must have, in a few seconds, the robot in the center of the world. There it is. Great. So let's open another web shell and check. What do we have here? So we have a rust topic list and we have as usual for this robot the common velocity topic. Okay. And what is the type of the topic? Rust topic info. Common velocity. This is a geometry message, twist message. And let's check our JavaScript code. Basically, just before sending the message. I am setting the topic that I want to publish to. First thing is that I have created this topic attribute here. I'm not creating, remember uh, in Vue.js we are not creating any more just spare variables in the code. Instead we are creating variables inside the data attribute of the Vue.js element. So it means that all of the objects and variables that we are defining can be accessible from any methods that you may have in the page. Okay, so I am defining the message here. I'm going to explain the message, but then we are defining the topic. And it's very important that you define it like this. So this is a ROS lib topic object. First thing you have to pass is the ROS connection handler. It's the handler that connects the JavaScript code to the ROS bridge web socket server. And it's defined in the connection function that we have created before. And the second parameter is the name of the topic, and we have just in here the topics available and the type of messages we want to publish. So it's geometry message twist. Okay, and then after setting the topic, uh, actually, the order uh, it's not so important but right now. I could have defined the topic before, but I'm doing it like this, it's fine. And I'm also defining the message that I want to send to this topic. And why am I defining the message like this? So we have new ROS lib dot message. And I am defining the first attribute linear. And it contains three attributes, X, Y, and Z. And this uh, linear attribute has a sibling angular. And it contains the same attributes, X, Y, and Z. Why it goes like that? Uh, you can check the type of message we want to publish. Just type in the terminal ROS message show and the type of the message, which is geometry messages slash twist. Then you can check the structure of the message. Okay, so this is why I am declaring the message like this linear x, y, and z, and angular x, y, and z, because I'm following the structure that is defined on 
ROS message. Okay, this is the pure uh, type of the message. So you can just uh, get back to the code. So after defining the message and defining the topic, we can just call the topic object and this topic publish. And what do we want to publish? This message. Okay. So let's check if it's working. Uh, I'm gonna deattach this tab and put it to the right side. And at the same time, I'm gonna put the, the simulation on top and put the, the Rust DS page to the left side of my screen. As you can see, the robots just stop it there in the center of the world. I'm gonna press the go forward button and the robot must go forward, there it is. I'm gonna stop it. As you can see, uh, my screen is quite laggy, but it's working real time, okay? So let's check what we have here in our values. Uh, for the forward message, I have linear x value equals to one. Y and Z uh, makes no sense for this kind of robot because the robots can only go forward. That's because of the structure of this widget robot, okay? And angular velocities, they are all uh, equals to zero. So for this top method, I am defining everything equals to zero. Then we have backward message, which is sending the robot to backwards. So the linear speed, uh, the linear x velocity is set to minus one. Okay, just a little problem here with my connection. Uh, I'm gonna just launch everything from the scratch. So let me have the simulation running. And I need also to restart my web page. There's no problem to me actually because it's something that I've been doing uh, very often. So uh, we have to source again the virtual environment, which will get our Python 3 server available. Go to the web pages folder and start the Python server like this Python minus m http server. Now you must have the page available. And in a second web shell, I'm going to the right side again. We have the simulation available. Put it to the left side. And ROS launch, ROS root server. There it is. I'm gonna reload my page. Connect to the web to the ROS root server. It's not ready yet. So as you can see, our logs, is, uh, it's working amazing because the Raspberry server was not ready. And as you can see, we had some error here. So it's connected because the Raspberry server was not ready. Okay, but if you try again, uh, notice that you don't have to reload the page, just try to connect again. And now we have a connected message and it's connected. Okay, I'm gonna try to push the robot forward again, go forward, and there it is. And if I press go backward, remember we are setting the linear x velocity minus one. Okay, stop please. And open the ID. Let's check the turn left and right methods. So turn left, we have just a, a small velocity in linear x and z uh, positive to turn to the left side and z negative to turn to the right side. So again, the simulation of the screen, let's press turn left and the robot must perform the circle uh, to the left side, stop and turn right. Now the robot must perform a circle to the right side. Okay, uh, so there it is. This is the goal of this video, of this third video. Uh, for this video, uh, this is the, uh, what we have achieved. I hope you like it. And remember, if you like this kind of video, uh, leave a comment, like the video, and please leave your feedback so we can improve. If you have any doubts, remember you can always clone the project we are working with just using the project link we are sharing below. Okay, see you in the next video. Bye.